Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will be talking about how to become an ultimate buyer's agent in any real estate market. So we're going to talk about building close relationships with your buyers, establishing buyer requirements, sourcing properties that meet the buyer's requirements, negotiating the purchase of a property on behalf of your buyer, maintaining communication with relevant parties, uh, value added services, time management, how to deal with non-qualified prospects, buyer scripts and talking points, buyer's guide and consultation, asking for the referral, and then finally asking for the review. So number one is building a close relationship with your buyer. Using strategies like Ford and LP Mama, so Ford is family, occupation, recreation, and dream, LP Mama is location, price, motivation, appointment, mortgage, and agent. Your first goal is to make the connection with the buyer. So using these two acronyms, right, mainly Ford, because that's the conversational piece, you want to just get that connection with the buyer because that is going to help you build the relationship. You should know everything there is to know about them, as if you were attempting to make a friend for life, which you should be. So remembering the little things, such as the dog's name, the parent's name, the kid's school, or any other small, intimate details that they shared helps build a true relationship. And by the way, that is going to naturally bring buyer loyalty. Um, that's one of the biggest questions I always ask, get asked of is, how, does, how do I make my buyer stay loyal? Building the relationship is how they're going to stay loyal to you. The buyer is going to feel connected and they will not only be loyal to you, but they're going to listen to you and take your advice. How frustrating is it when people don't listen or they don't take your advice and you know what's going to happen, but sometimes you end up having to just let them, you know, unfortunately something bad will happen before they understand, right? That's self-realization. But if you build the connection, you have the relationship, they will listen to you and they will take your advice. You need to remember that this is the biggest, most likely the biggest purchase that these people will ever make in their life, ever. This is a huge purchase. I know that, you know, as, as real estate professionals, we do this day in and day out, but this is the biggest purchase of their life and you need to treat it as such. Um, this quote is just fabulous. When, so our customer is the North, our North star. When the customer comes first, the customer will last. That is the best way to look at it. Um, so you need to establish buyer requirements. So you should know exactly the wants and or versus the needs are what they are for your customer search. Consider things such as cost, renovation, size, parking, bedrooms, bathrooms, Features, basement, laundry room, neighborhoods, schools, transportation, commute, amenities, pet necessities, and so much more. It is your job to guide them. If they start to stray, you need to reel them back in. Remind them of their goals. You are the expert guide in their home buying search. So remember, you already are building a good relationship with them. And again, you are just there to remind them, keep them on track. Well, listen, you told me that you needed this. This was an absolute, you know, deal killer for you. Unless you had three bedrooms or four bedrooms or whatever it is that, that was a major requirement for them, or they must have a driveway anything or they need to be near the train or they have a dog. So if they're looking for a co-op, it has to be a pet friendly building. These are all the important things that, and details that they're going to be sharing with you and that you will be discovering throughout your conversations. So when they start to stray and say, hey, I want to go for this or for that, and just because they want to save a few bucks here or something looks, you know, uh, nice and enticing because it's really cheap, but it fits none of their requirements, it's super important that you keep your buyers on track. And you also know, again, the, re the wants versus the needs. Because if somebody starts, um, you know, let's say they really want a pool, right? But 
the pool is not going to kill the deal, then you know things that you can still show them without a pool and it still is going to meet their requirements. And then if they tell you, oh, but I really want a pool and I don't want to make an offer, again, you reel them back into reality. So the other part is sourcing properties that meet the buyer's requirements. So utilizing a CRM to do the work is going to cut your time in half. Um, usually the MLSs do have contact features um, where you can add in a contact and set up a search alert for them. The only thing that doesn't work when it comes to that is that you are literally trapped to just the listings that are in that specific MLS. So if you add them to the Brooklyn MLS or the Staten Island MLS, um, they're only going to receive listings that go to that MLS. If you have your own website, uh, usually with CRMs, for instance, we use KV Core, um, they do connect, they get an IDX feed from several different uh, MLSs. Therefore, you have the ability to set up an alert for your buyer that will give them the latest listings with their preferences um, through several MLSs. And then it'll also show you the back end and you can see what they're looking at, if they're opening their emails, if they're doing any searches on their own. Um, and of course, when you have the front end website to your CRM, it will keep them in your house right? It keeps them in your brand and everything is branded with your name on it. And it just shows that it's an IDX feed. <clears throat> and then the second piece is staying in touch. Um, so the number one thing that causes buyers to seek other agents is the lack of communication. So staying in touch with your buyers is a key factor in keeping the relationship steady and staying in the front of your buyer's mind. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, but as long as you are sourcing these buyer requirements, staying in touch with them, um, this is going to help you nurture the buyers. Um, utilizing that CRM to do the work for you is, again, going to cut your time in half. The CRM can do that, and then you can swoop in and set up the appointment to view once you see that they're really interested in a property or that they reach out to you, or perhaps they, they've looked at the property 10 times, right, in the last two days. The next thing is negotiating the purchase of the property on behalf of the buyers. So number one, you wanna strategize your offers. Make sure you know your buyer's limits and you know their financial information. Present your offer whenever you can directly to the seller via conference call. Um, get offer acknowledgement forms, insert escalation clauses in hot, in hot markets. And make sure you are following up and following through on these offers. So you're going to present your buyer's offer timely. Follow up to obtain a response to your offer. Keep in contact with your buyer about their offer. Respond timely to any counter, off to any counter offers or final and best circumstances. This is where you do your job as a real estate professional, right? You're going to help negotiate. You're going to guide the buyer. You're going to advise them. Where do you start? Most listings sell within 7%. Are you using the MLS to see the area, uh, the zip code, the neighborhood that you are in? What are the houses going for over there? How much off the sale price are the houses selling? Are they selling within 3%, uh, 2%, 7%, right? It could be selling over. There's so many things. You need to know what's going on in that market. And then you need to advise your buyer correctly. Make sure you know what they are capable of financing. Can they go over? Can they, is, is it too much for them? What is going to get them the deal? Okay. Advise them to make sure that they're doing things timely, that they have all their, their paperwork in order. And like I said, make sure you're, you are presenting to the seller directly via conference call whenever possible. So if you are a Brooklyn MLS agent, you can request to present your offer via conference call. Uh, usually other MLSs like Cyborg and OneKey, they do have offer acknowledgement forms that you can request to show that your offer has been um, presented to the seller. Uh, try to stay away from the buyer love letters. Uh, these can cause potential fair housing issues, but for the most part, as long as you know your buyer, you have the financials in order, everything is on the up and up, and you are very clear and responsive, you have a great shot. And the escalation clauses in the hot markets 
is where you give your buyer a chance to win. So when there's several offers and there's bidding wars, you can put something in there that says my buyer is willing to offer up to X amount of dollars in increments of ten thousand uh, dollars, not you know again not to exceed this number, um, and then proof of offer is required if you meet the you know if you need to go up above any number. Um, and then again, stay in touch. If you don't have a response to your, your buyer's offer yet, keep in touch with the agent from the other side and keep in touch with your buyer. Sometimes people feel scared. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to have any confrontation because the buyer is going to say, what do you mean? You don't have an answer to my offer yet. Make sure you stay in touch because then people are going to go behind your back. They're going to call another agent, call the listing agent. All kinds of things will happen and they lose their faith and trust in you. Okay.